Hello, I am R. Pradeep Kumar. Know your IS code provisions short lecture series. I am going to discuss today uh, clause number 7.2.6 that is response reduction factor. Now, what is this response reduction factor? It is factor by which elastic base shear is reduced to get a uh, design base shear. <clears throat> now, why this elastic base shear is reduced? Uh, reduced because buildings uh, during moderate to severe earthquakes not, are not expected to behave elastically. So that is the reason. Except for some uh, few structures, uh, all structures are expected to behave uh, inelastically or uh, uh, behave non-linearly. So that is a factor. That is response reduction factor is used for that purpose. Actually, response reduction factor is the actually combined effect of three uh, like uh, factors. That is overstrength, redundancy, and ductility. So let's go into the details. I'm sharing my screen. So response reduction factor, which is clause number 7.2.6 of IS 1893-2016. The definition, the code uh, uh, says in definitions, that is, it is a factor by which the base shear induced in a structure, if it were to remain elastic, is reduced to obtain design base shear. Now, base shear is calculated using this formula, BB is equal to AH multiplied by W. AH is uh, uh, base shear coefficient and W is seismic weight. Now, AH in turn is calculated by using this equation that is Z by 2 and SA by G uh, R by I divided by R by I. Here R represents response reduction factor, I importance factor, Z is zone factor and uh, SA by G is the acceleration uh, value. Well, let's look at uh, this graph and the building uh, on the side here. So this building is pushed by uh, design by base shear. So as you can see in this graph, horizontal axis is displaced, both displacement and vertical axis is uh, base shear or uh, total horizontal uh, lateral force. So VE is the elastic uh, uh, base shear and VD is the design base shear. So this elastic base shear is reduced to design base shear by using this factor R. R is equal to VE by VD. So this R, how this R is decided, we'll uh, get to know about it. Now this value, it depends on the perceived seismic damage performance of structure characterized by ductile or brittle deformations, redundancy in the structure or overstrength inherent in the design process. Now, in other words, it is a combined effect, uh, effect of uh, overstrength, redundancy, and ductility. Now, overstrength, redundancy, and ductility together lead to the fact that an earthquake resistant structure can be designed for much lower force than is implied by the strong shaking. Now, let's look at the uh, details. Now, this is a base shear versus roof displacement uh, uh, graph. So, <clears throat> if say we design uh, a structure for a design force that is VD and then start pushing the structure laterally. So what happens is structure, structure yields at a point which is uh, slightly higher than the design force. Why it is? Because of the inherent overstrength which is present in the materials. So it yields at a higher point than uh, uh, design, design uh, we, we, we design. And then after that, immediately the, uh, like this uh, load deformation graph will not drop down, but the tangent that is a curve will bend. That it means what stiffness of that uh, structure reduces. Stiffness of the st structure reduces. So this still further, it goes up to the peak. So continuously stiffness of the structure reduces. So this branch of the curve is because of the redundancy of result redundancy present in the structural system. So and, then, and after peak, then it curves, curve drops down. So if you look at this equation, uh, which is given below, VE by V design is response reduction factor. Now that 
is constituted by three terms weak yield by v design so which is due to over strength of uh, the over strength inherent in the structure present in the structure then second term v max by v yield is because of the redundancy present in the structure and then third term which is v e by v n v max that is uh, uh, due to ductility present in the structure you can see these three uh, drops the first drop that is because of the ductility second one is because of redundancy and the third one due to uh, over strength so response reduction factor along with the damping during extreme shaking and redundancy uh, what happens is it influences the non linear behavior of buildings during strong earthquake shaking and accounts for inherent system ductility redundancy and over strength normally available in buildings if designed and detailed as per this standard that is 1893 and associated other indian standards now for the purpose of uh, design as per this standard the response reduction factor values are given in table number 9 which i will describe i will uh, detail it out and then this is not applicable to the frames which are designed uh, independently that means only one frame okay so as you can see in industrial uh, structures stand alone frames let's look at the uh, recommendations for reduction factor now code uh, recommends reduction factor for five uh, lateral load resistance systems that is one is moment frame system second is braced frame system third one is structural wall system fourth one is dual system and fifth one is flat slab well, let's look at the first one in moment frame system there are two things one is rc uh, building second one is steel buildings and in that rc buildings also ordinary moment resting frame and special moment resting frame and in steel also same thing now what code specifies is uh, since uh, ordinary moment resting frame is not allowed in say zone 3 zone 4 and zone 5 we have to go for ductility of response reduction factor of 5 and in only zone 2 uh, that the uh, response reduction factor of 3 is allowed okay only 3 then when it comes to uh, braced frame system uh, code allows to go for 4 uh, 4.5 and 5 uh, response reduction factor values then in the third one that is structural wall system in structural wall system if it is load bearing uh, masonry wall so it allows that is without horizontal bands 1.5 and uh, unreinforced masonry with horizontal rc band that is 2 and then in the third one that is uh, dual systems there are two things one is ordinary rc structural walls and uh, ordinary moment resting frame for that code allows uh, three as response reduction factor but if one of these two that is structural wall and uh, moment resting frame if it is special moment resting frame or a uh, ductile structural wall code uh, specifies value of 4 and then for both that is ductile rc wall with the special moment resting frame code uh, recommends uh, response reduction factor as 5 and then the fifth category of uh, structural system that is flat slab uh, structural wall system so in this one for all the uh, flat slab systems code uh, allows only 3 as response reduction factor but puts a condition that is uh, punching shear is should be avoided and also lateral drift there is a limitation that is it should not exceed 0.1% so these are the recommendations of the code for uh, various structural system recommendation of r for various structural systems now let's look at these three contributing factors first one is over strength so the structure yields at a load higher than the design load so why it is so because of uh, partial safety factor because of material uh, properties so characteristic strength if we say say m25 or m30 so usually uh, like not more than 5% of test results fail below this value so that is a characteristic strength so if you use say m30 then automatically more than 95% of uh, cubes fail above that so that's the reason why we have over strength in that and there is some contribution from the non structural elements also that is over strength then second one is redundancy now this redundancy is like yielding of one location in the structure does not imply yielding of the complete structure so because of the redundancy present in the uh, uh, structural system so that means what load re redistribution takes place so sometimes this additional margin due to redundancy is also considered within over strength term 
Then the third one is ductility. Now ductility is by definition, it is a capacity of the structure or its members to undergo large inelastic deformations without significant reduction in strength or stiffness. Now, as the structure yields, two things happen. One is there is more energy dissipation in the structure due to hysteresis. And the second one is structure becomes more softer. That means natural period increases, thereby it attracts less seismic force. So higher ductility implies that the structure can withstand stronger shaking without collapse. So it is far more economical to design structures to sustain abnormal forces through displacements than through stiffness. Now there, are, there, is, there is a relationship between uh, this ductility and response reduction factor. That is for long period structures, they are related with, with this relationship. That is R is equal to under root 2 mu minus 1. The real mu is uh, ductility factor and R is response reduction factor. And for short period structures, R is equal to mu. And for zero period structures, that means stiff structures, uh, rigid structures actually, R is equal to 1 irrespective of uh, ductility. And this response reduction factor is uh, uh, recommended in all other international codes also in uh, uh, like similar uh, manner. So the intention of this uh, short lecture is to help uh, students and practicing engineers to understand this uh, IS code provisions. And for uh, preparing this uh, lecture, we have used these uh, references, that is 1893, and then IS study code and commentary, uh, code and commentary and then BMTPC tips, GSDMA document. And I sincerely acknowledge the support of uh, uh, my PhD students and uh, master's students in the preparation of these slides. So thank you and uh, have a nice day.